Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD, pro physique athlete. Today I'm going to be sharing my full current hypertrophy program, which is based on a modified upper lower split. As you guys know, I had an extended season this year, winning my pro card and competing in Worlds. While prepping, I was using a full body approach to maximize fatigue distribution. Now I've switched back to an upper lower split. And this is a uniquely modified split, which favors the back, side delts, and calves. Pretty excited to be sharing this with you. This is some pretty unique programming. This is a moderate volume program and is designed for an advanced athlete, particularly myself. So please note that if you're a beginner, a lot of the things I involve in this program may not apply to you. Hopefully it'll provide some insights as to how I set things up. We'll start with a program walkthrough where I'll share all aspects of the program, including exercises, sets, and reps. Next, we'll talk about my weekly setup or how I lay workouts out across the week. And finally, we'll talk about pros and cons of my current upper lower hypertrophy program. All right, let's do our program walkthrough. So this is Dr. Swole's personal upper lower program. It's a four day modified upper lower split that I'm using for bulking coming out of worlds. We have upper body day one, lower body day one, upper body day two, and lower body day two. Here are the exercises and here are the sets and reps. Down here have the total number of sets for each workout so you have an idea of workout length. And here we have the total number of sets for each muscle group per week. And you'll see that this program favors the back, side delts, and calves, which are the muscles I'm currently prioritizing. Starting off, we have bench press for the chest, two sets, and we warm up to one top set of three to six reps, and then do a back off set with three to eight reps with about 10% off the bar. This top set back off method is one that I really like for incorporating strength work with hypertrophy. Next, we have T-bar rows of the back, two sets. And again, top set back off method, one top set of six to 10 reps, followed by a back off set with the same number of reps, but less weight. Then we have incline machine bench press for the chest, three sets of eight to 12. Following that, machine rows for the back, four sets of eight to 15, and this is a chest supported row. After that, cable upright rows for the side delts, four sets of eight to 15. I superset these on the cable stack with cable press downs for the triceps, three sets of six to 15. Note that I use fairly broad rep ranges here, and this is because I use a wave loading style of progression. So in week one, I might do 14 or 15 reps. In week two, I might do 11 or 12 reps. And in week three, I might do six to eight reps. Next, machine high preacher curls for the biceps, two sets of six to 10. Following that, cable hammer curls also for the biceps, two sets of 12 to 20. You'll see that I use quite a few exercises here, and in particular for the biceps, you might ask why I don't just combine these into one exercise with four sets. And this is because each of these exercises is accomplishing something specific for me. The preacher curls train the biceps in a shortened position, so emphasizing the short head a bit more, and I'm using hammer curls to target the brachial radialis. As someone less experienced, it'd be totally fine to just do fewer exercises, but I'm trying to accomplish something specific with these. We wrap up this workout with machine calf raises for the calves, and I'm using a my rep scheme here. So work up to one top set of eight to 15 reps. Take only about 10 seconds break, and then I do seven mini sets of three to five sets. So I work up to one top set of eight to 15 reps, and then take a short 10 second rest, and then go on to do seven mini sets of three to five reps, only resting about 10 seconds in between. This kind of rest pause training works really well for calves. Going on to lower body day one, I start off with squats for the quads, two sets, and I have one top set of three to six reps, followed by a back off set of three to eight reps. As you guys can see, I really enjoy the top set back off method. Then I have RDLs for the glutes and hamstrings, two sets, one top set of six to 10 reps, and a back off set with the same number of reps. And leg presses for the quads, three sets of 10 to 15. Note that I modified the rep ranges here a little bit just to make it more accessible for you guys, but I'm actually using blood flow restriction training and using higher reps for a lot of my accessory quad work. This is because I'm dealing with tendinosis of my patellar tendon. I superset these on the leg press machine with calf raises. And again, we're using a mile rep scheme here, one top set of 10 to 20 reps, followed by seven mini sets of three to five reps. And I approximate this as five straight sets. Then I have seated leg curls for the hamstrings, three sets of eight to 15. Following that, neutral grip pull downs for the back, four sets of eight to 12. And finally, machine lateral raises for the side delts, four sets of eight to 12. So you'll note that I've moved a little bit of my back training and side delt work off of upper body day onto lower body day. Typically with upper lower splits, we have long upper body days. So this helps to even out workout lengths. And since I'm prioritizing these muscle groups, it allows me to get a higher frequency and accumulate more volume across the week. So you'll see that I'm getting a four times per week frequency for my back and side delts and also biceps since these pull downs also hit the biceps. Next upper body day two, we start off with dumbbell overhead press. Two sets using a top set back off method. So one top set of five to 10 reps and then a back off set with the same number of reps, but less weight. Note that these rep ranges are kind of a moving target for me right now. This is a snapshot of what I'm using right now, but I may actually move my top sets to slightly lower reps later on. 
Next, we have weighted chin-ups for the back. Two sets using a top set back-off method as well. One top set of five to eight reps, and then one set of six to 10 reps. And a similar setup for my close grip bench press, I just fixed a typo here. Two sets, one top set of six to 10 reps, and a back-off set of six to 10 reps. Notice that the use of the top set back off method is not just limited to the big three movements. I'm using these for my accessory movements as well here. And you'll notice that I actually like to program weighted chin-ups in a strength-oriented fashion. I think these are an awesome movement for heavy overload. Then we have machine rows for the back, also a chest supported row, four sets of six to 12. Machine flies for the chest, three sets of eight to 12, followed with cable leaning lateral raises for the side delts, four sets of 12 to 20. I superset these on the cable stack with overhead extensions for the triceps, two sets of eight to 15. Following that, Bayesian curls for the biceps, three sets of 10 to 15. And finally, machine calf raises. I'm also using a my rep scheme here, one top set of 10 to 20 reps, followed by seven mini sets of four to six reps. Finally, lower body day two, I start with sumo deadlifts for the glutes and hamstrings. And here I'm just working up to one top set of five to eight reps. Deadlifts are very fatiguing for me, so I'm minimizing the amount of volume I'm using for them. Then we have Smith Machine squats for the quads, three sets of six to 10. Following that, lying leg curls for the hamstrings, three sets of eight to 12. And then we have leg extensions for the quads, three sets of six to 15. Following that, we have single arm pull downs for the back, four sets of 12 to 20. Machine lateral raises for the side delts, four sets of 12 to 20. I wrap it up with bent leg calf raises, and I'm using a my rep scheme here, one top set of 10 to 20 reps, followed by seven mini sets of three to five reps. All right, now that you guys have seen my program, let's talk about my weekly setup across the week. Here's my preferred layout. I have upper body day one on Tuesday, rest, lower body day two on Thursday, rest, upper two, lower two, and rest. Note that I said that this is my preferred layout, but this isn't often how it happens for me. Since I work unpredictable night shifts, I often have to shuffle workouts around throughout the week, which is one of the powers of the upper lower split. I can move workouts around and it's okay since the workouts don't really interfere with each other. Now there are some slight preferences I would have, so I'd rather have upper body days come before lower body days where possible, so my lower body training doesn't interfere with my upper body day productivity. And there are some nuances with exercise selection. For example, you'll see that I've placed my heavy row, my T-bar row, on the upper body day here, which should be spread out for my lower body days by rest days. You'll also notice that each of my workouts is built around one of the main heavy lifts. I have bench press here, squat here, overhead press here, and deadlifts here. This setup works nicely for an unpredictable schedule because I can still have a main upper body movement next to a main lower body movement and not run into issues. If, as a theoretical example, I had squats here and deadlifts here, if I want to shift the days around, I would end up having squats and deadlifts back to back, which would be tough if I'm really trying to hit certain numbers for strength development. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of my current upper lower program. Starting with the pros, this program is very flexible, which we just talked about. This is absolutely necessary for me as a doctor, but I'm sure a lot of other people watching this also have unpredictable schedules, and it's nice to have a split that accommodates your life. Next, this program incorporates some strength work in an advanced, very careful fashion. You'll see that I actually have very little exposure to my main lifts here. Since I've been doing these movements for a long time, I'm good with my technique, so I don't need to do a lot of work on the lifts to build my technique. By just doing one or two sets of these main movements per week, I'm really able to push overload on these while not accumulating too much fatigue from them. I do have some chronic overuse injuries that are exacerbated by these movements, so I'll want to use them sparingly. But I really love these basics for overload, and that's why you'll see that I brought them back in. Next, this program features a high frequency for back, delts, and calves. The power of higher frequency is it allows you to accommodate more weekly volume in a productive way. For example, if I tried to lump all 20 sets of back training onto one workout, I'd probably be really fatigued by the end of that workout and not performing as well. That is, I wouldn't be getting as many reps for as much weight. Spreading out the work allows me to hit those sets harder with each workout. As I mentioned, these modifications also serve to even out the day lengths, so I'm not missing out on upper body emphasis. I didn't write this here, but my biceps are also getting trained four times per week. And I really like higher frequency for smaller muscle groups like biceps and side delts. Finally, this program has good fatigue distribution. You might initially think that my leg days are going to be really tough, but I found that I don't really need that much volume for my leg training. So you'll see that my lower body days are actually shorter than my upper body days. Okay, now let's talk about the cons of my modified upper lower program. First of all, you have long workouts, and this is largely because I have quite a few exercises for each muscle group. As a more advanced athlete, I specifically want some of these exercises to accomplish certain things. Note that for someone less experienced, you could get away with fewer exercises and just more sets for each of those exercises. Next, this program on paper has uneven muscle group volumes. As you know, I'm trying to prioritize my back, side delts, and calves, but this program isn't necessarily designed as a specialization cycle for myself. That is, I've just found that my other muscle groups like legs and chest don't need that much volume to progress. Again, this is something that you're gonna have to find out for yourself. You're not gonna be able to just take one of my programs and run it out of the box. 
you will have to optimize your set volumes and your rep ranges for each muscle group. Finally, you'll see that arms are trained after pushing and pulling movements on upper body days, which is an inherent disadvantage of the upper lower split. Note, however, this is slightly mitigated for the biceps since some of my back work is moved on to lower body days. This mainly becomes an issue when your back volumes get high on a certain day. For myself, I usually find when I'm doing about eight to 10 sets of back in a workout, my bicep training will be significantly impacted afterwards. So moving some of my back work off of upper body days actually solves that issue for the biceps. The triceps are still trained after my main pushing movements though. Now, if you guys wanna learn about how to actually run your programs over time in an advanced periodized fashion, check out my newest book called Advanced Hypertrophy Periodization. In this book, I go through some of the most advanced concepts on hypertrophy periodization, integrating my own experience and opinions with expert scientific consensus. I talk about strength blocks, metabolite blocks, volume cycling, and more. If you want to see my previous four day full body program that I was using during my world's prep, check out this video where I go through an in-depth analysis of my workout program like I did here. That program was uniquely designed for an advanced athlete dealing with a lot of issues with fatigue management. There's some special programming applications that are used in that program that you won't see elsewhere.